a filter control allows a user to manipulate the data that's in a report. So when they're in view mode, they can actually use the filter to change what they're seeing within the report. Um, and they can add um, as many different elements um, that appear in that filter as possible. Now, what we're gonna do is create a filter control for class so that the user is able to filter the data we can see in our report by class. So they'll only see period one or period two, depending on which one they wanna go for. And I'll show you what happens to the information once we've added that particular filter control. Now to add one, you can go to insert and then filter control, or you can go to the tab in the middle. So it's kind of this one uh, that looks like three lines, but getting smaller is your filter control. So I'm going to click on there and then I'm going to place that somewhere within my report. I'm going to place it at the top here. OK, on the right hand side. Now, what again do Data Studios go into try to pre-populate that? And it's almost read my mind in this case, and it's actually added my dimension of class. So I've got my dimension of class in there, um, which is perfect because that's what I wanted. If it hasn't for you, make sure you grab it from that available field and put it into your dimension. You can also add a metric onto a filter report, and this is gonna give me a record count. So again, when I go to this, it's just gonna give me there's period one and there's one record of that, or there's period two and there's two records of that. In my case right now, I don't necessarily need to have a metric. So I'm gonna remove this metric in here, but you might want to, um, so when someone's about to filter, it might be how many students there are in particular class, that might be something that's quite helpful. So you might wanna include that information into those. So I'm gonna remove my metric onto those. And I'm gonna just change my order on here. So I've got descending or ascending, and I'm gonna go for ascending. So it'll go period one, period two, rather than if it was descending, it would be period two, then period one after that. And the interesting thing down here is around order, you've got show top number. So I've currently got it defaulted at, uh, at set show the top 5,000. Now we only know we've got two uh, entries in here, but say if you did have 50 particular classes and you wanted to see, I don't know, filter it by the top uh, 10 classes for this particular um, total mark, for instance. So if I had my metric as total, it would pick the top 10 highest totals in my filter view. So I could select those and then the rest would be kind of as a, as a bulk 11th option as to see the rest of, of the class. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave that at 5,000. But you'll notice you can go from 10,000 uh, all the way down to the top number one. It's up to you what you want to do. Now let's just leave that as it was on the standard default. Okay, let's find out what this actually does, this filter control. So I'm gonna switch now to my view mode. So I've come out of edit and got into my view mode and I've got this new filter that I can then use as a user. So this is what a user would be able to see. So I'm gonna click on this class over here and I'm gonna scroll down and I've got period one, period two, both of those are selected. Let's just select period one. I'm gonna click on period one only and you'll notice my charts have updated. So now I've only got period one in this particular um, stack column chart and my average mark has changed 64, okay, from 65. If I select everybody again, just use this top one and select everybody, it's gone back to 65 and I can see both periods. And again, if I go just to, or I can untick period one, whatever option I wanna do, I'm just gonna see period two now. And again, that average mark has now gone up, so 66.22. So it's a really handy tool to then have. And the great thing with this, it's unique to this particular user. So if I gave this report out to um, two people or five people, they'd all get a unique view of their own report. So you wouldn't see what somebody else is filtering that report, that you would just see this only on my screen. Somebody else could filter that report in a different way. So if I was the teacher of period two, I might just wanna see all of period two's marks. Um, maybe my, my colleague would want to see maybe just period one and they just want to see those information, but maybe my boss would want to see both periods so they can compare the two and see how well they're performing against those particular areas. So it's a really great way to, um, to filter that report for a user point of view. So I've still given them the same information, it's just they've now got a bit more control of how they're seeing that data, which could be really handy for them. And you need to consider where this particular um, filter would appear on your screen. Think about your user interface, where would it be? So if, a, if somebody was trying to do something or filter it, you don't wanna hide it down like in the middle here, 
So that might not be clear necessarily to somebody how stuff's being filtered to your user. Let's keep this at the top. So it's nice and clear somewhere at the top. Uh, you might even want to add some text around it, filter by class or whatever options you then have uh, and, and give those options to your user so it's really clear. Again, there's a few options in style on here. So if you do want to customize this, you can think about how this menu appears. So I've got it set as a pop-up menu. If I go for a fixed size, I've got to make sure that that fits the fixed size. So there we go. I've got to make sure I've, I can see all of those because otherwise um, my viewer's not going to be able to see those when I, my user's not going to be able to see those when I go into the view mode. And you'll notice now I'll go into view mode and that's permanently there. So I can now filter these and it's really clear now what I can actually filter and what I can't filter. Um, I can even have the search option where I could type in if I've got a number of different options within those. I can type for what I'm trying to find. Uh, I'm going to click that back uh, and go back to my uh, pop up. Click on the style here. Click back onto my pop up menu. Uh, make that a little bit smaller again. Um, uh, and I can enable a search box if I want to have that or I can disable that if I want to. And again, I can play around with any of these options. So have a feel free, have a play around, uh, get the or customize your filter control the same way that you have with the rest of your reports. And then next, we're going to be looking at how you can actually add pages to the report. Currently, we've only got it as a single page, but it really starts to add more elements, certainly with these filter controls, if you can use those and apply those over multiple pages and see that information for you. So that's in the next section.